South Carolina at Clemson. What's the line on this thing? Oh, about 14 and a half. Tigers favored by about 14 and a half. It's a noon kickoff, so you guys don't have to wait too awful long Saturday morning, 11 a.m. If you live in God's time zone, it's an ABC game. Let's be very clear. Now, I want to be crystal clear on this. Everything's on the table. Like I had a bunch of Gamecock fans sheepishly coming at me in the DMs. Hey, jo- Josh, no, don't tell anyone I asked this. Can South Carolina win? Yeah, they can win. Did you watch the Tennessee game? Last- yeah, they can win. Did you watch Clemson and Notre Dame? Yeah, they can win. Now, how do they win? Do I expect them to win? Am I betting them to win? South Carolina has not won at Clemson since 2012. A guy by the name of Steve Spurrier was still the head coach there. The Aggies of A&M were just coming into the SEC. So, yeah, it's been a while. But South Carolina, I would argue, has rarely been in a better position to pull this thing off since then. South Carolina's offense just utterly exploded. There is, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no explanation for it. They just exploded against Tennessee last week. Now, what we have to try and figure out, and it's an unenviable position to be in, what we have to try and figure out is, was that a one-time deal? Like, did Tennessee just, just drop the ball that fantastically defensively? Or did South Carolina figure something out? Because certainly, like if you go back and you look at breakdowns and you watch South Carolina, they did things differently. It wasn't even October either. We're well into November. So stands to reason we pretty much knew what they were, and then they broke that out on us last week. And I'm not going to play the sound right now. I'm going to reference something we're going to play later in the show. Dabo got asked about it earlier this week, and he had some interesting things to say, so we'll get to that later. But I think a lot of folks look at it and say, wow, that was an explosion. Okay, but they'll come back to earth this week, right? Look, here's the difference. Tennessee's defensive line versus Clemson's defensive line is night and day. So I'm I'm not saying that they get stoned this week or anything like that. I'm just saying it is a different chore to try and move your way up and down the field against Clemson's defensive front. I understand the Notre Dame game happened. You've got to grant me every other game's happened then, okay? If I'm going to acknowledge the one exception, you've got to acknowledge the rule. That's why yards after catch for South Carolina is going to be ultra important because there is not a world, at least in my mind, this Saturday – where we watch Spencer Rattler with a bunch of time to work in the pocket. He is not a mobile guy. Uh, That's what hurts Clemson more often than not. He is not a mobile guy. So you're going to have to buy him time in the pocket if you want a bunch of those long developing uh, pass routes to open up. I don't think that's in the cards. Yards after catch, short stuff, underneath stuff, perimeter stuff, that's what you got to do. And then you got to make your hay afterwards. That's how they got to rack that up, if they're going to rack that up. The best bet here, is getting enough wins one-on-one from your corners. If you think about what South Carolina has to do, and this is how we do a lot of these breakdowns on games where there's a big spread, how could the upset happen, you know? Their best bet is being able to single up on the outside and just looking at DJ Uyangalale and saying, if you beat us, Hoss, you beat us. But you're not doing it with your legs. You're not going to just run around. You're not going to fall forward and convert third downs. You're going to throw the ball to beat us. And if you do, you're a heck of an athlete. We'll tip our cap to you. And that's your best shot here. Can you trust your guys in one-on-ones? Now, over the last few years, you'd say absolutely no. This Clemson receiver room is not what it's been in the last several years. So it's it's a tall task. It's not insurmountable, though. Uh, If DJ's arm beats you, though, Eh, that's okay. Okay. You're, you're, a, you're a two touchdown dog for a reason, but make that be the way you get beat. It's an early kick. It's at Clemson. Look, I know everyone understands what at means on the bottom of the screen. It's a big deal. It's a huge deal to go from playing at night in Williams Bryce to playing on the road early kick here. Controlling that state is huge as a selling point for Dabo Swinney. Trust me on that. And so as we look at what the model thinks here, And we look at what Vegas says. Vegas, Clemson minus 14 and a half. Model thinks Clemson is going to roll Saturday. Uh, Look, I kind of calibrated a little bit to bring the number down to a more reasonable figure that is suitable for air. It's still got Clemson minus 17 and a half. So it's still a solid three points apart from what the Vegas number is. I'm going to trust it. You know, and look, Shane Beamer certainly proved me so wrong last week. We didn't even break the Tennessee game down. That's how thoroughly that we thought Tennessee was going to go in there and win. So they could do it again, but they're going to have to do it again because I'm going to roll with Clemson. I think it is a great big feather in the cap of what some people are calling a down year 
for them to win this game, they're still in the playoff conversation, guys. There's nothing lost at Clemson right now. Like, they still got a bunch to play for. So I'm going to take them to win, and I will take Clemson to cover. And let's just see how that game starts out. Let's see through that feeling out process early on. I'm glad that game's happening when it is. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video, and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me. That's how we keep this entire thing free.